Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today, we're listening in on the lung sounds. Wheezes, crackles, strider, and more. You'll definitely need to know these for patient care and the NCLEX, because they could be downright deadly. Now, for all my Simple Nursing members, be sure to grab these lung sound study guides inside your membership. And let's tune in. In this video, we're going to be listening to the top five most tested lung sounds, including the need to know key points and the top missed questions at the very end of this video. So be sure to stick around to the end of this video to get the need to know info on exit exams, your nursing exams, as well as the NCLEX. And be sure to pause the screen and focus on the highlighted key points here. Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. First up is the wheezes, which we call the whistle, sounding a lot like this. As you can hear, it's described as a high-pitched musical flute located throughout the entire lung. But key term here, it's heard mainly on exhalation, or basically breathing out. Now the patho is very simple. Narrowed airways from bronchoconstriction, basically those inflamed lung tissues. And the disease process is typical for asthma attacks as well as COPD exacerbation. Now the treatment for asthma attack, this one is always tested on. So write this down. The memory trick we use is AIM. A for albuterol. This one is given first for brutal asthma attacks. Remember, buterol. It's the one and only rescue drug for asthma attacks. I is for ipratropium, our anticholinergic, to dry out secretions. So just think you can't pee with a tropium, since it dries the body out. And M is for methylprednisolone. Brand name is cellumedrol. Just think it's a slow-acting steroid to treat the swelling. Next up is crackles, also called Rawls. So just think crackles is for crazy fluid, described as liquidy bubbling or crackling. Now we have two types. Fine crackles is described as high pitched, like rubbing hair between fingers, sounding like this. And coarse crackles is that low pitch sound, sounding like Velcro being pulled apart. Sort of like this. Now the location of these crackles are typically in the lower lobes or the base of the lungs, also called basilary. And the patho is simple. It's basically the alveoli that are popping open from inflammation and congestion. And the disease process is typical for pulmonary edema, that fluid in the lungs, like with patients in heart failure, that CHF, or pneumonia, where we have deep infection inside the lungs. So the treatment, we give diuretics, like furosemide, for that heart failure patient with pulmonary edema, and for the infection, like in pneumonia, we give antibiotics. Next, we have strider, which we call the serious squeak. This one is a medical emergency because it indicates an airway obstruction, sounding like this. As you can hear, it's described as a high-pitched, harsh, inspiratory whistle. The key term there is inspiratory, when you breathe in. Now, it's located near the throat region during inhalation. And the patho is simple here. Blockage of the larynx, or basically that voice box, or trachea, that windpipe. And it's caused by a choking obstruction, epiglottitis, that inflamed epiglottis, croup, found in kids with a whooping cough, and after a thyroid surgery. This includes thyroid as well as parathyroid. Huge NCLEX tip. I would write that one down. It came up a lot on many different question banks. Now, the key treatment is endotracheal inhibition as well as surgery. Next up, we have ronchi, which we call the rumble, sounding like this. Mm -hmm. 
This one's described as a low-pitched rattling or rumbling, kind of like a snoring. Located in the bronchi, not the alveoli here. So the patho is mucus secretions or obstruction. The typical diseases that we see this in is bronchitis, COPD, pneumonia, where we have infection, as well as cystic fibrosis, where we get serious mucus in cystic fibrosis. Now the treatment we use is chest percussion, or basically vibrating the chest with a vest, and fluids to loosen and thin that mucus. Next, we have pleural friction rub, which I call the pebble friction rub, because it sounds like two pebbles being grinded together, sounding a lot like this. As you can hear, it's described as low-pitched, dry rubbing. Again, like two rocks being grinded together. Now, this is located in the front side of the lung during inhalation and exhalation, basically in and out. And the patho is very simple here. Just think of infection causing inflammation in that pleural layer of the lungs, and that is what's rubbing together, causing that grinding sound. Now, the disease to focus on is worsening pneumonia, that infection. So a lot of test questions will ask indication of worsening pneumonia or signs and symptoms that indicate worsening pneumonia. And the answer usually always includes pleural friction rub. Now, the key treatment is for TCDB, that turn, cough, and deep breathe to cough out all that infection as well as use of the IS, incentive spirometer, and antibiotics. Now, pulling from our Simple Nursing NCLEX question bank, written by the people that actually wrote the NCLEX, here are the top missed test questions. So, the NCLEX will give you an exhibit button and play an audio clip of abnormal lung sounds, and then ask you a specific question about that lung sound. So, let's play our first clip here. Okay, now according to this lung sound, the question asks, this lung sound is indicative of which condition? Now, before looking at the options here, it sounds like a ronchi rumble. So with ronchi, you have to think bronchi, specifically bronchitis. So option two is the correct option here. Now, option one is incorrect. It's not a whistle sound, so we know it's not asthma, that wheezing whistle. And it doesn't sound like rubbing rocks, so we know it's not a pebble rub or that pleural friction rub. So option three is incorrect. And option four is also incorrect, since a strider sounds like a squeak. So it doesn't sound like a squeak, so it's not a strider squeak. Okay, now the next top miss question gives you an audio exhibit and asks for interventions here. So, let's play the exhibit. Ooh, okay, now that sounds like a whistle for sure. So the question asks, based on the lung sounds, what priority intervention should be anticipated? And the infamous select all that apply. So. Again, this sounds like a wheezing whistle, so you must think either asthma or COPD. Now just think here for any NCLEX question, what kills the patient the fastest? An asthma attack, that status asthmaticus. So remember, we covered the interventions, and remember the memory trick, AIM. A is for albuterol for that brutal asthma attacks, which is the one and only rescue drug for asthma. I is for ipratropium, the anticholinergic to dry out secretions, and M is for methylprednisolone, that slow-acting steroid to treat the swelling. So the correct options here are option one, two, and four. Albuterol, ipratropium, and methylprednisolone. Now option three is incorrect because we do not need to place a chest tube. So chest tubes are usually for hemo and pneumothoraxes. And option five is incorrect because a chest x-ray is not a priority intervention at this time. Remember, 
Priority intervention for that wheezing whistle and asthma is AIM, albuterol, hypertropium, and methoprednisolone. Okay, next top miss question, three of four. Let's play the exhibit here. Ooh, that sounds nasty. <laughs> okay, the question's asking, lung sounds for which condition? So this definitely sounds like coarse crackles. So for crackling, you just have to think crazy fluid, those wet lungs. So which option relates to those wet lungs? Well, let the name help you here. For edema, we get swelling with fluid, right? And pulmonary is for the lungs. So pulmonary edema, those fluid-filled lungs, indicates crackles from that crazy fluid. Now, question four of four here. Client with a history of congestive heart failure, key term there, presents with new edema in the lower extremities, sudden weight gain of six pounds in about two days, and key term, coarse crackles at the bases of the lungs. What is the first action? So a lot of key terms here. First things first, heart failure. So think HF for heart failure, HF for heavy fluid. Now, is the heavy fluid getting worse? Well, yes, look at the key terms here. Terms like new and sudden, so new edema and sudden weight gain, as well as coarse crackles in the lungs from that crazy fluid. Now, a little side note and NCLEX tip here. Words like new and sudden typically always means a priority patient, so just keep that in mind there. So the first action is option number three, anticipate IV furosemide. This drug ends in IVE, so think it makes the body dried. Now, this is the first drug we give for pulmonary edema, where we have fluid-filled lungs, which will kill the patient. So, how do we get this fluid out of the body and into the potty? Again, on the NCLEX, the number one drug for worsening pulmonary edema, specifically with heart failure, is eye-ending diuretics, like furosemide, bumetidide, and torsemide. Just think these end in eye, so it makes the body dried. Now, I stress this because a lot of students get this wrong and choose albuterol, our bronchodilator. So just think, why is this wrong? Well, think of the patho here. Bronchodilators dilate tight lungs, right? But is tightness really the issue here? Well, no, fluid is the problem here, not constriction. If it was constriction, we would hear the wheezing whistle, which is typical for asthma attacks. But an asthma attack is not the problem here. It's that pulmonary edema with the crackles. So we must drain that fluid with diuretics ending in eyed to make that body dried. So guys, always slow down and look at the keywords to let the question help you. Looking for more tips and strategies for questions like the ones we just covered? Well, our Simple Nursing membership includes exit prep lectures and thousands of questions across all nursing school and NCLEX topics. Now, speaking of the wheezes, Hesse mentions sibilant wheezes. And the answer is unilateral, high-pitched, musical, and whistle-like sounds during, key term there, inspiration. Memory trick again is that wheezing whistle. And another question, on auscultation, lung sounds are similar to hair being rolled between the fingers in a patient with heart failure. And the answer was fine crackles. Again, the key term there is heart failure. So just think HF for heart failure, HF for heavy fluid. And crackles means that crazy fluid. Now Kaplan mentions the cause of crackles is underlying inflammation or congestion. And pleural friction rub is that gradient sound or vibrations heard during inspiration and expiration. Yes, again, Think plural friction rub is that pebble friction rub, sounding like two stones being grinded together. Now, very lastly, but definitely not least, separate from the rest, is the death rattle, known as Cheney Stokes, also called our death rattle. This signals that death is very near. On average, a person lives only 23 hours or less after this death rattle begins, typically for the critically ill 
like those with intracranial pressure, strokes, worsening heart failure, or that end-stage kidney failure. It's described as an abnormal breathing pattern with increase and decrease in respirations, seen as start and stop breathing. Now, the patho here is we have apnea that stop breathing, leading to an increase in CO2, that carbon dioxide, and hyperventilation to blow off that increase in CO2. And the cycle kind of starts over and over again. Now, the only treatment that is indicated is intubation and mechanical ventilation. Basically, the patient's going to have to go on a ventilator. So Kaplan mentions Cheney-Stokes respirations. We have a gradual increase in depth of respiration, followed by a gradual decrease in the depth, then a period of apnea. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.